way under four for the year and was big instrumental to the LSU's success uh, last year out of the bullpen. That levels the count at one ball and one strike. Schwabe yesterday was two for four. He singled the first couple of times he came to the plate, and he scored a first inning run. The outfield plays him slightly to the opposite side and fairly deep for a left-handed, or excuse me, for a leadoff batter. Griffin Herring, this will be his uh, fifth appearance of the year. He's worked five and two-thirds innings. He's given up five hits, struck out seven, but has walked four. It's been a small sample size for Herring so far, short relief only. Now it's an opportunity today for him to uh, probably stretch it out a little bit and improve his numbers as, you know, with LSU starting SEC play on Friday, they would like to see Griffin Herring give them you know, a nice outing today, maybe go four or five innings. Schwabe is from Thompson, North Dakota. The pitch fouled away. Ronnie, this is a bit of personal history for Herring. It's his first career start. That's pretty cool. Something he'll always remember for sure. This game was to have started at 1 o'clock. LSU's baseball administration took a look at the potential weather pattern and decided uh, that a four o'clock start would be a bit better. Well, clearly the uh, LSU administrators that made the decision to push the game back from one to four have a career working for the Weather Channel because it didn't rain and the Weather Channel's right about 50% of the time anyway, so. Well, 500's a good average That's, in And, game, and the weather though. game, absolutely. <laughs> It definitely went into the wrong profession. That's that's one that people forget what you said the next day. It's pretty The only cool. people who lie more are politicians. <laughs> the 2-2 pitch. Lifted into shallow center field. Braswell retreats and he fights the sun. And Nowadays they have all the... Doppler 8000, all the different technology. When Skip Burton was the coach here in the 90s, he used to just call Malcolm Morrow, former meteorologist, to call him at his house and go, what do you think? <laughs> hey, it works. He'd give him a move the game up, move the game back. That was, that was it, one guy. By the way, let's uh, correct the official scoring on that pop-up. It was caught by Pearson, the second baseman. Here's Dunlap. He's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He had an RBI double in the first inning and was hitless after that, including a couple of strikeouts. As hard as it is to believe, North Dakota State plays more than 50% of its schedule to start the season on the road. Swing and a miss, he couldn't find it. Really nice slider on the outside edge by Herring, a little backdoor movement. Those flags are uh, showing the effects of the wind out of the south at 13 miles an hour. There's a 37% chance of rain. Right now, 78 glorious degrees under partly cloudy to cloudy skies. Hake comes to the plate after a one for three performance with a walk last night. You talked about North Dakota State, how they have to go on the road. Only 16 home games does Tyler Hook squad uh, have scheduled. And I asked him, I said, you know, what do you do when you've got to play so many games on the road, especially they're off to a 3-12 and 12 start. Their schedule's brutal. They're playing the likes of Oregon State, LSU, Southeastern, Long, you know, uh, 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 Cal Irvine. They had Long Beach State scheduled. And he said, look, our guys that come to our program, they, they know what to expect. They understand that that's how it's going to be. And uh, he said it's a one-bid league that the Summit League is in. They, they feel like this will help them be battle-tested for their conference uh, tournament at the end of the year. 
And his record is nearly 500, which, as I said before, Ronnie, is really admirable considering the non-conference schedule that they always play. By the way, next year, North Dakota State will return down south to play Alabama week three and th as well as Tulane weekend, week four of their season. Well, and they, might, they might end up playing LSU in a midweek game, too. That's to be determined. It is known as a football school, of course. They've won 17 football national championships. The 2-2 pitch in on the hands and sliced foul. That's a stinger in mid-February with the temperature in the 40s, but not so much today with the temperature in the upper 70s right now. Herring delivers ground ball to Pearson, and the second baseman gets it over to Jones for the out. A one, two, three inning, and we will return in a moment. Pitch that you like to throw down and in the righties, so we'll keep an eye on that. He works from the very edge of the pitcher's plate. In a compact motion, the first pitch is a strike to Mac Bingham. Bingham is from San Diego, a first-year Tiger. This is the 16th start he's made. Hitting 283. One home run, eight driven in. There will be no play on this foul ball. Bingham is at the top of the order today. He's played straight away on both the infield and in the outfield. The one two pitch. Hit sharply and short hopped by Style at third base. He gets it over to first. Style at third and Schwabe in center field have. There are three 300 hitters in the lineup tonight or this afternoon for LSU, and here's one of them. Tommy White at 318. Neal at 364 leads the pack as far as today's starters are concerned. And the only other 300 hitter is Travinsky at 333. The 2-0 pitch ripped and it's over the head of the leaping second baseman. The shift is on. Tommy White is going to dig for second and he'll make it easily. That ball had a lot of velocity as it left the bat and Tommy White sends a screamer into left center field. Tommy White right here. Gets a fastball. They tried to go outside corner. It leaked back over, down and in. And White was right on that. A bullet to left center field. And that's got to feel good for Tommy White. He, you know, for LSU today, today's a big day. You're going to be on the road tomorrow going to Stark Vegas, Mississippi. And you want to get some confidence. And if they can get a little double-digit hits today against the, the Bison, that will make the offense feel good going into a big series this weekend. That was the third double of the season for White. It's very likely he'll collect many more. He's only had two home runs to this point, so that's only the fifth extra base hit. Although the average continues to be very nice at well over 300. But we'll see Tommy White start connecting for extra bases. Here's Brady Neal. That's tight. Let's take a look at his swings last night, Ronnie. Yeah, you can see great balance by Neal. Just uh, he spreads out wide. You can see he just gets through the baseball. Just punishing those pitches. I mean, he really looked like he was locked in and balanced and feeling good. That's a great sign, LSU. Needs a few of these Tigers to get hot. How about those goggles he's got on? Those glasses are serious. That fills the empty base at first. And walks have been a huge problem for Sargent this year. 
This brings on Jones, who hit one nearly 400 feet to the opposite field for his sixth home run of the season yesterday. It is a hitter's friendly wind today, blowing out toward left center field. The pitch sweeps wide. Jones is the biggest target at the plate for the Tigers. A 6'4", 253-pounder. Here's Jared Jones' home run last night. It was a fastball on the outside edge, and he just stayed right on it, drove that shoulder right towards the baseball, and hit that about 400 feet out to right center. Had an exit speed of 108 on that pitch. That'll get you pulled over in Livonia. <laughs> you could cut that in half, and it'll get you pulled over in Livonia. Cut it by a third or two-thirds. The pitch sweeps wide. He has seen a lot of breaking balls. And we'll see what Sargent does on the 3-1 pitch. It's a hitter's count for Jared Jones. The outfield is very deep and straight away. Way outside for ball four. So a one out double by White and a pair of walks to Neal and Jones. And the water is boiling now around Matt Sargent in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, the young freshman really over cranked that one, pulled that one. That would have been behind a left handed hitter. And you see the struggles continue. He had them came in with the nine walks in three and a third innings. And today already two and one third of an inning. And the Bison have bullpen action and activity already. That's number 24, Hunter Rosen. Rosenbaum. Yep. He's a senior. Now you got to like this spot if you're a, a hitter. You know a pitcher struggling to throw strikes. You can just sit fastball. He's probably going to throw one down the middle to try to get the party started. That's high to Travinsky. He's got White at third base, Neal at second, and Jones on first, courtesy of a double and a pair of walks. Travinsky takes a rip and hits the top of the baseball. Yeah, a little overly aggressive that time by Hayden Travinsky. That was a ball, but he wanted to bases loaded, one out, try to make something happen. Three home runs, 18 driven in. He'll also take a walk. This ball is smashed and sucked up by the third baseman and throws it away. Style misfired on the initial throw to second base. And the Tigers get a run out of it. Well, that was something you don't really see very often. Bases loaded one out. Neal doesn't forgets that the bases are loaded and he retreats back to the bag. That's what forced style to throw the ball. You know why it was because he saw Neil standing on the base. He kind of freaked out a little bit. And uh, a base running mistake turned into. A little manna from heaven for the Tigers. So that'll be a fielder's choice and a throwing error. The bases remain loaded and here's Pearson. That ball was hit hard enough to turn two with Travinsky running, but again, a you know, third baseman comes up. There's, there's a guy standing on the bag, and he sort of hesitated and threw it in the right field. Weird play. Pearson hitting 220, three home runs. He was not in the lineup last night.
Pearson has replaced Stephen Milam at second base today. Milam was a little bit ginger after twisting a knee yesterday on a play. He stayed in the game. He was eventually lifted in the ninth inning. This ball is hit solidly, but is hooking foul. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one in. Now it's three and two. No place to put Pearson. And he swings and misses. And that is a huge strikeout for Sargent with the bases loaded and one out. Now two gone. That was uh, pulled the string a little bit, actually up and away. It was just the location. That would have been ball four. Yeah. Michael Braswell will try to clean it up. Oh, got him. So he gets to first base. Brady Neal scores. Jared Jones moves to third. Now that's just a flat out miss. You saw the catcher set up down and away and that hit Braswell in the back of the, the knee. 42nd hit by pitch this season. That's tied for the lead in the SEC. And you will see LSU first or second in the SEC every year in hit by pitch as long as Jay Johnson's the head coach. Here's Kling who could really use a base hit. He's won for his last 17. And over the course of the last seven games, he's three for 24. One ball, one strike. Two outs. There's a Tiger on every base. Jones, Travinsky, and Braswell. Kling waits. The 1-1 one -one pitch on its way. That's a good take. It was a bender that started in the strike zone and then worked its way outside. 31 pitches already for Matt Sargent in the first inning. That is a bunch. He'll be a corporal before it's over. The pitch. Another good take by Kling. Three and one. Bases loaded. Two runs home. Kling waits at the plate. Brown is on deck. Ball four. Now yeah, they're probably going to have to, as much as you don't want to, make a move with two outs in the first. I'd be surprised if he can continue, and it looks like they're going to make the change. So three walks, a double, an error, and a hit batter. Let's see if he can get Jake Brown. Or vice versa. A strike to Brown. Jake is hitting 290. This is his eighth start. He's at nine base hits. Two of them have been doubles and one run batted in. He's got a chance to increase that right here. The pitch just off the plate. That was a good miss. 0 2 pitch. Couple of balls off the edge. Catcher tried to frame it. Now it's two and two. A smash up the middle it is short hopped. 
by Dunlap, and he's able to get to the bag for the force. Brown hit it. And actually played here at the box in 2009 in an NCAA regional. That was the year Paul Maneri's squad won the national championship. I think Baylor and Southern, I think, were in that regional as well as Minnesota. And uh, so he had experience as a player and now bringing back a team as a third-year head coach. Well, that means he played here in year one of the new ballpark, that's right? right? That's right. He's been with North Dakota State uh, since 2014 as an assistant and then three years ago got promoted to head coach. Hill lifts this one out of play. He'll be followed by Canton and Schaffner. Herring delivers. It's a little bit wide. Griffin Herring making his first start. Induced a pop up, a strikeout, and a ground out in the first inning. And he heated that one up a little bit. Here's the 3 2 pitch. A foul ball, predictably. You love that stat, don't you? I do. 62% of 3 2 pitches are fouled away. It just went up 12%. No, no, it used no. Used to be 50. No, it didn't. There's two in a row, by the way. I'm well ahead of the game. All right, I'm keeping track the rest of the day here. Okay. I'm two to the good right now. A call third strike. Herring works one in on the inner half of the plate. And Hill unable to respond. Good spot here. Neal sets up down and in and doesn't even have to move his glove. Griffin Herring last year, Lynn, in SEC play, pitched uh, 17 and a third innings, made nine appearances, was very active out of that bullpen, pitched in almost a third of the games in SEC play last year. Canton is batting 222. He's driven in nine. And that one shaved him. Uh, you can see that coming. Two fastballs up and in, almost hit him in the head. And then you throw that breaking ball, those knees are going to buckle. <laughs> Ronnie, we've got a little bit of a reversal of sorts on the infield. Braswell is now playing second base. And Pearson has moved over to shortstop. I don't know whether it's for this batter only. Well, I think, you know, we saw, I want to say the first time I ever saw it, saw it was Northwestern State. They used to take their best infielder, and depending if it was a lefty, they'd put him on the Second base, and if it was a right, he put him at shortstop, and it would do the flip-flop thing. So maybe it, maybe it's something like that. Well, Braswell is now playing normal second base, and Pearson, who started the game at second base, is in the normal shortstop position. You put your better fielder. Let's see if that's something Jay Johnson stays with. Look at this. A four-three put out. With the new four getting involved. Who wears number 10? And they're going to stay there. Okay. We've got another uh, lefty coming to the plate. Mm -hmm. so. Jake Schaffner, who is the second baseman by trade. 
Five in a row retired by Herring. And the sun has come out brightly. Steve, right? I, I, I like it. You use all the uh, the data and the analytics to your favor. You know, nowadays they get the chance to see all the data. They know every at bat. They know what your tendencies are. And Pearson is a converted outfielder playing infield, where Braswell's a natural second base, a uh, shortstop. So Jay Johnson playing the percentages. That ball is rerouted off the glove of Herring. White picks it up but has no play. And this is the first base runner for the Bison. It comes with two outs. And now with a right hander stepping to the plate, Braswell looks like he's going to go back to short. And there is a right hander warming up. He's worked five innings this year. He has been reached for eight hits. A 5.40 ERA. He also has allowed three walks. The runner is safe at second base. Good job by North Dakota State here. Big leg kick and a breaking ball, which means if you're stealing, you've got a big advantage. Plus the throw is on the shortstop side of the bag. So and he made it easily. I haven't seen uh, many opponents be successful against LSU catching this year. The Tiger catchers have been very, very good. Well, Schaffner has not been caught this year. He's four for four. Jack Style at the plate. The 0 2 pitch. A ripper over the outside corner. That takes care of business in a hurry. Christian Little coming before the SEC schedule starts as a tune up, both out of the bullpen and in some position players. And a new pitcher, Seth Thompson. Already the third pitcher of the day for the Bison as we play in the bottom of the second inning. LSU batted around in the first. Here's Mac Bingham. Uh oh. Start over. Just a little do over. How about Seth Thompson? Well, they're going to call ball one because he took too much time. That's true. Didn't throw the ball. He should have, should have thrown it as he's falling down, right? So ball one on the batter. Now ball two. So Seth Thompson, 6'4", 220 right-hander from Calgary, Canada. Yeah, I, I talked to his dad before the game. I saw his dad in the stands, and um, he was telling me that they, you know, when they played over at Southeastern in the three-game series, they went to Don's Seafood over in, right. over in Ham and had some crawfish, gumbo. You know, they really did the boiled crawfish thing. He Good said, for them. He said they liked it. I said, what did it taste like? He said, well, it's like mini lobsters. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't say chicken. <laughs> but no, they said they got a chance to have some seafood. And then he took uh, some of the parents are here from NDSU. They took their parent, uh, kids around. Seth and a bunch of his teammates went and saw Mike the Tiger Cage toward LSU's uh, campus. They've had a good time down here in South Louisiana. May I inquire of you? How did you know it was Seth Thompson's father? That's a shot right through the middle, or excuse me, on the left side between Style and Dunlap. And so Bingham is one for two at the top of the order as he bangs one between the third baseman and the shortstop. That ball was elevated up in the zone. Bingham really likes to pitch up, and he got on top of that one. Well, I had a one in six shot because I think there's six Canadians on the team. Right. And he had a thick, thick Canadian accent. Okay. But then I think what did it, Lynn, was I said, who's your son? And he said number 31, Seth Thompson. Gotcha. So that really was the icing on the cake okay. for me to nail, nail it down. That's nice investigative work on your part. <laughs> and it's always fun to hear visitors for the first time to South Louisiana describe what they like and what they don't understand. Here's the shift on for White. Tom, yeah, Thompson on the mound from, like I said, Alberta, Canada, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He played two years junior college ball down in the Phoenix area, Chandler Gilbert Community College. So went from the snow-capped mountains to the desert, and now he's back in North Dakota. 
White leans into one and rips it with authority. Foul. Well, he burned the shift yesterday. They had that infield playing on the left side, but yesterday he had a little ground, hard ground ball through the right side. See if he tries it again. Two balls, two strikes on Tommy White. A runner at first base. White cues that one off the handle and it drops in foul ground before Carson Hake can get to it. Three runs, two hits, no errors for LSU early. No runs, one hit, one error for the Bison. Bingham takes only a two-step lead. White sends a fly ball deep to center field. Schwabe is back. It appears he has room, and he does, where the dirt of the warning track meets the grass. White hit it close to 400 feet to exactly straightaway center field. A couple hard hit balls today for Tommy. He had the double and the left, and then that one drove it to the deepest part of the ballpark. Up steps Brady Neal. He walked and scored in the first. They are pulling him on the infield now and shift over into the three infielder position on the right side. This has become commonplace in this series, hasn't it, for both sides? It's commonplace, period. You know, that's just what everybody's doing now in college baseball because everybody has the same info. That's a good breaking pitch. And a wild throw will allow Bingham to take second, and he's galloping to third. An errant pickoff throw from Thompson got past the first baseman, and for the life of me, I have no idea why you would hold Bingham. He was only a step and a half away right. from the bag. I mean, not more than five feet. Look at this. They no. throw anyway. Yeah, there's no That's crazy. No chance he's going anywhere. If anything, if you're just not comfortable to throw the pitch just step off the back of the rubber and reset so a mental error on the decision to throw to first base and then a physical error and the pitch is a slow curve outside it stays wide That one comes back and gets a piece of the outside edge. Just the sliver. That is the Terminator look by Brady Neal. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Thompson comes all the way back. Neal checking with the umpire to see was that a strike? It was. That was a, this is a very good pitch. 90 miles an hour. Look at the location. Right on that outside corner edge. If he doesn't swing, it would have been called a strike. So two outs. Bingham still at third. No contact by Neal with a teammate 90 feet away. And it brings on Jared Jones. That breaking pitch is off the plate. See if Jones can pick up his teammate Neal, who had the runner at third, less than two outs, didn't get him in, and now it 
See if Jones can uh, ahead in the count get a good pitch here. Here's the 1-0. Steve, right? And he did. That ball leaked back over in the hit zone, but he, I think, was maybe looking off speed. That did not miss by much. A good take by Jones. Jones nearly took out his teammate Bingham. Two balls two strikes two outs a runner at third three nothing Tigers. Now the 2 2 pitch. High and tight. A breaking ball is ripped foul. Yeah, that was that was a ball, but. Too close for Jones to take. Already 23 pitches this inning. The starter threw nearly 40 in the first inning. And then Rosenbaum pitched to one batter in relief. Good take. There's ball four, so the inning continues. That's Jones has walked twice. Yeah, a couple of walks, and he. It's good practice for him because, you know, teams are going to really pitch him carefully. He's one of the. Three big power guys for LSU. You talk about Travinsky, White, Jones. Those are the teams that teams circle and don't want the ball to leave the ballpark. But they're going to throw him a lot of breaking balls. So if he can take those breaking balls, which is harder harder to throw a breaking ball for a strike than a fastball, he'll get a lot of walks this year. That's a call strike on Travinsky. Hayden has one of the two hits for the Tigers. Or I beg your pardon, he's got the uh, the first RBI. And that's a call strike. A couple of good pitches by Seth Thompson, breaking ball in the inside corner. It's back Travinsky up a little bit, and then he went fastball away and painted the outside edge. Thompson has some nibble room now. Runner was moving from first base. Kravinsky fouls it away. Runner is moving again. It matters not. Kravinsky goes here in the second or third. You know, North Dakota State, they started playing Division I baseball. They went to Division I like a 05, 06, something like that, and uh, made the NCAA tournament in 21. Won at Stanford, won a game against Nevada. It's the only time that's been done in program history. And in 22, they made an NCAA regional as well. I think their first regional was 2014 at Oregon State. Hamilton takes a pitch out of the strike zone 2 and 0 from Christian Little. He came on and pitched to one batter in the second inning and struck him out. Hamilton is batting for the first time. Bush will follow and then the top of the order. The 2 0 pitch high and tight.
Three in the first for the Tigers. Only one was earned. North Dakota State was especially charitable. And the 3 0 pitch misses a four pitch base on balls. Hamilton is early to the bases here in the third. Here's Will Bush, the catcher. He was batting in the middle of the order yesterday. Christian Little takes a few steps, makes an underhanded toss over to first base. The sacrifice by Bush is successful. 1 3 on the put out. Well, well done by both sides. You know, Bush got the bunt down, just softened it just enough. Even though it was a comebacker, it, that, that couple extra bounces made it so that Christian Little didn't have an option to think to. Here we go with Caden Schwabe. He popped up to the second baseman in his only at bat. One on one out little over the top misses low. Samuel Dutton is warming up for LSU another right hander. There's Dutton. Tommy White makes a barehanded pickup, fires, safe at first base. Schwabe was able to leg it out. White did everything he could with a nice play, picking it up barehanded and then firing a strike over to Jones. But Schwabe beat it. Yeah, really well placed bunt. I mean, White did everything you can do. I mean, that was absolutely perfect by Tommy White, but Schwabe's one of the fastest runners on this Bison team, and he beat it out. Dunlap hitting 242, swings on the first pitch. Jones is chasing it and so is the catcher Brady Neal and Brady Neal makes a heck of a play and then realizes nobody's covering the plate so he sprinted over there as well this is a heck of a catch by Brady Neal now I don't know if he probably should have caught it you've got a pitcher or first baseman all right there but Brady Neal Got it anyway, and it was his dugout was yelling, cover home, cover home, and he got back quickly. What a talented player he is. He played right field yesterday. He's obviously just keeps improving as a as a defensive catcher as well. He also has an infielder's glove. He's been working some at some infield positions. There's a fake throw to second and a toss back down to third, but everybody is alert enough. So an uncontested stolen base for Schwabe. And now a base hit could make this a one run game. Hake out of Victoria, Minnesota at the plate with a pair of teammates in scoring position. One ball, one strike, two outs, two on the bases. Christian Little rocks and fires over the top. Foul ball right side out of play. A left hander has joined Dutton down in the bullpen yeah, for the Tigers. Nick Ronzini. 
starting to move around. Here's the one two. Upstairs that had some velocity but it was elevated. Hake is hitting over 300. Three homers seven driven in. He bounced out to the second baseman last time. Here's the pitch at 2 2. Swing and a miss. He could not catch up with the fastball in it. Josh Pearson is the first Tiger to come to the plate. Josh Pearson last time up. Sort of chase one up in the zone. There's a couple of LSU hitters that. Jay Johnson would like to see start trending the other way. Josh Pearson's one of them. Kling is another guy. Both have gotten off to slow starts and are expected to have really big years for the Tigers. They're going to need Josh Pearson and Kling to uh, to turn things around if they're going to do all the things they want to accomplish. The one strike pitch. Now the count is level at one. LSU only has two hits. But North Dakota State University was charitable in the first as the Bison. Walked three hit a batter. And could have uh, recorded another out on the base paths but did not. That will find grass out in left center field. Pearson makes a big turn and then retreats to first base after a solid knock to left center field. Yeah, sat back on a 78 mile an hour curveball in the outside corner. One, two was the count. You see that ball is actually a little off the plate. He leaned over and hit that ball sharply the other way. LSU for the second straight inning puts its leadoff batter aboard with a single. And here's Braswell who was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded in the first. Strike one. Silty on the mound went to a school his high school. How about this name Thunder Basin High like I mean that's a that's powerful. That's a good good name for a, a high school sports team Thunder Basin. One and one. Kling is on deck. Brown will follow him if the Tigers stay out of a double play. That's foul. Braswell shaking his head a little bit right there because he know he got a, he, he knows he got a good pitch to hit an 88 mile an hour fastball sort of above the belt. You don't get too many of those as a hitter. Braswell hits one pretty well out to right field Hill is retreating he's on the warning track and he makes the catch two strides short of the fence. A well hit ball tracked down in right field by Garrett Hill for out number one. Yeah, that ball was tattooed. I mean, there's nothing you can do as a hitter. You, all you can do is hit it hard and hope it finds green grass. Here's Kling, who walked with the bases loaded last time. He takes a bender outside. Paxton looks at another one spin off the plate. And he takes that high three and oh.
Pearson is at first base with one out. Braswell followed with a line shot that nearly made the fence in right field. It was caught by Hill. And now it's Kling ahead in the count, three and one. Runner on first base is moving. Kling is swinging and slices it foul. Let's check the runner. He was moving last time. Pearson with a short lead. He's off again. Kling swings and pops it up behind the plate in foul ground. Catcher is circling and cannot get it. He ran a route, did Will Bush, that resembled a question mark. Well, he uh, definitely took a Magellan right route to that ball. Yep. Will Bush, who was named a Summit League player to watch based off of what he did the last couple of seasons, gotten off to a slow start. Kling gets, Kling gets a little piece of that. The runner was again moving. That's the third consecutive pitch on which Pearson was dashing towards second. Runner moving again. Pearson is getting in his aerobic activity from first base. He's moving again and cling. Sends it up the elevator shaft near the mound. And the shortstop calls away his teammates and makes the catch. Dunlap there to retrieve that one. And now there are two outs as Pearson is huffing and puffing as he returns to first. Here's Jake Brown who is trying to make a make a move to put himself in that outfield on an everyday basis. There you see Pearson. Ooh, they called him out. Pearson is nailed on a close play. The ball bounced in that be Garrett Hill leading it off for the Bison. Hill struck out against the starter Herring. Back in the second, Herring was lifted with two outs in the second inning. And it's been Christian Little since then. Now 2 and 0. Now last inning Christian Little walked the leadoff batter on four pitches. Now he was able to get out of it unscathed without giving up any runs. But you don't want to start that way again here. You know, there's another Louisiana team, Ronnie, with a connection to North Dakota State. And I'm getting this from an authority who played on that team. Northwestern State in 1967 played in a regional against North Dakota State. It was a small college type. Yeah, it wasn't the Division One. It was a lesser classification, but still pretty cool. Tommy White is in front of that, has plenty of time, throws it to the chest of Jared Jones, and Hill is retired. Well, that was big for Christian Little. He got the three balls, no strikes. The ghost of last inning passed was in his ear, but then he went strike, strike, and got a big out. Here's the left fielder, Sam Canton. 
He was a ground out to second base victim last time. And they've shifted again with uh, Braswell moving over to the second base position and Pearson exchanging positions with him at shortstop. That's a little bit elevated. So 67 Northwestern State played North Dakota State in a regional in the small college regional. When did you graduate high school? Like 68, 69? Yeah, 68. Yeah. So. You don't remember that when you were at Bolton reading in the Alexandria Daily Town Talk about the big net matchup? You know, it's coming back to me now that you <laughs> mention it. Bob Tompkins probably wrote the article. Might have. <laughs> no, he would have been in high school, too. Canton with a count of two and two. The bases are empty. LSU in the top of the fourth leads the Bison three nothing. The runs coming in the first. Christian Little rocks and delivers and misses. Little last year was drafted in the 19th round by the New York Mets. That was number 576. He pitched in 2021 and 2022 at Vanderbilt. And he burns the plate a call third strike. And he's still pumping that 95 Chad right here. Good pitch right down the middle of the plate at the knees. That's now two innings pitched in the books for little today. Three punch outs. 29 pitches through those two innings. Christian's father Chris Little played in the Houston Astros organization for a while. Took, took a little something off. Pulled the string on that one. 86 on that straight change. That used to be a decent fastball 86. Absolutely. Schaffner at the plate. Little misses with another off speed pitch that was supposed to twist a little bit. Little in 32 appearances at Vanderbilt had 14 starts. He goes back to the heat, but he misses. It's two and one. The most innings that Little worked in any performance last year for the Tigers was five and a third against Ole Miss. That was a start on April 23rd. That ball comes up to the chest of the shortstop and then he fires it over the head of Jones. And that's Josh Pearson who had moved over to short. Yeah, that's. You know, LSU playing the when the lefties are up, they put Braswell, the shortstop, at the, on the second base side of the bag. Well, that's what can happen if if uh, the scouting report doesn't happen exactly the way you want it. You got your second baseman who's truly an outfielder playing shortstop, and that's what that, that throws a tough one. And did you see Brady Neal hustling down to back up the play? I mean, he was on his horse. And was able to play it off the facing of the dugout. They've ruled an error on that. That ball took a funny little hop when it got to Brass, uh, got to Pearson. It came up in his chest, and he couldn't field it cleanly, and then cut loose with the wild throw. Here's Jack Style. Offense has been playing hide and seek today. With more hide than seek. No runs, two hits for the Bison. Three runs, only three hits for the Tigers. Yeah. 
That's a good fastball by Little, and that may have been his best one of the day. He's been very consistent. That fastball in the mid 90s. Seen the cutter a little bit as well as the straight change. Style swings and misses. Style was the first batter that Little faced when he came on in the second inning. And Little won the battle. He struck him out. Two strikes, two outs, and a runner aboard at first. Schaffner takes a lead. Little misses high. Little was the 2020 Gatorade State Player of the Year in Missouri. Here we go at one and two. Runner moving. And a ball and a no throw. Two and two. Yeah, Christian Little, I mean, he stole that on the pitcher. He sort of lost track of him at first base, and he got a tremendous jump. Let's see if Little can take care of business right here. 2-2 two -two pitch, foul back. Little looks the runner back. That'll buy you a new 20 seconds. And now time called as Neil wants to go out and check with Little. Perhaps about the runner at second base peering in and doing reconnaissance. This North Dakota State team We'll take on Omaha and then Nebraska and then Oral Roberts. The 2 2 pitch. Can Little get his team back to the dugout? A check swing and a commitment as Style chased one that was breaking well off the, the month. Go to Fayetteville to meet Arkansas. And Ronnie, the first half of this uh, schedule is especially front loaded for LSU. A lot of very well yeah, regarded teams got, in the uh, early part of the season. Yeah, a lot of the higher profile, higher ranked teams. I mean, SEC is six of the top nine teams in America are, are, are in the league, and Florida. Preseason pick to win the East will be the first LSU opponent, not this weekend, but next. First home series in the SEC this year. Jake Brown is batting for the second time. He reached on a fielder's choice in the first to end the inning. Hayden Sealto is pitching. It's spelled S Y L T E. Pronounced seal to seal T. Three balls, two strikes on the youngster from Sulphur. And the pitch lifted out of play, twisting foul. Did you mark that one down as a 3 2 foul uh, ball? Uh, let me get my sheet. Okay. There it is. I think I'm a little ahead of schedule. Yeah, I haven't. I need the accounting firm of Schwartz and Bertman to help me out because I'm a little all over the place. There's ball four. Brown is able to earn his way aboard. I didn't have all. See, I got to have Christian Little's info in there too, or the, the whole thing skewed, but. I think today your 62% might be right. Oh, at least. But not always. It's house money, I'm telling you. Here's Mac Bingham. 
He is one for two. He singled last time and grounded out to third in the first. Got a guy, Jake Brown, can run a little bit over there at first base. Would, would be surprised if this is the new, the new Tigers. Yesterday, LSU ran a first and third play with, and stole home. Uh, they had a, a hit and run. They had a, a bunt. So you never know what, Jay Johnson might, might do this. You know, and it, it makes sense because they don't have the firepower with the homers like they did a year ago. Schwabe has room in straightaway center field. And there's the first out as Bingham flies to center. And LSU averaged about two homers a game last season. Well, the Tigers are missing, if you will, 85 home runs that were hit last year that are not available this year on the roster. So that's a lot to make up. For seven through 17 games this season, LSU's hit 20 homers. You know, last year they would have been 34, you know, something like that. So it's uh, they're going to have to play a little bit different style at times. How many homers did you say? 20 homers through 17 games this year. And Jones has six of those. Here's White. He's hit two out of the park. He's hit 51 home runs his first two years. Sealty from the stretch. Popped up. Right side. Hake, the first baseman, is drifting and he squeezes it for the second out. That was a big pitch. And it's, you know, to get White in that spot. This Bison pitching staff came into the game with a very, very high staff ERA. But so far today, they have limited LSU to three base hits. White had a first inning double. Bingham had a leadoff single in the second. And Pearson a leadoff single in the third. That's pretty close. In fact, he got him. Wow. You do not see that very often. A, a, a runner get picked off with a right-hander's move. That's a good, quick move. Watch right here. Brown jumping around way off the bag and a good, quick throw. And the tie worth the pit lefties. It's lefty on lefty to start things. And the umpire is asking for the music to be shut off. And my guess is that there's a, there we go, I got it. If the mouse doesn't work, you just unplug it. That's, that's, oh, yeah. that's all you do. Davis Hamilton at the plate. And a bender misses. Hamilton is the DH. He's hitting in the eighth spot. He walked his only other at bat. Bronzini delivers, swinging a foul back. Well, when LSU leaves tomorrow, Thursday, to travel to uh, Starkville to take on Mississippi State this weekend, 
Savannah Bananas will take over Alex Box Stadium for the next three nights, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 7 o'clock games. All of them jam-packed, sold out. Let's hope weather does not become a problem. 5.30, the gates open, 7 o'clock first pitch. It's one of those things where you want to be in the stadium by 5.30 because the show actually begins before the game. Folks from all over the country are making their way to Baton Rouge. I know some folks from out of state that are flying in for this, uh, for the for one, at least one of the games. I had a cousin who saw them last year in Portland, Maine, at the minor league ballpark there, and she said it was one of the most entertaining and interesting things she'd ever seen. Uh, if there's a baseball field beyond the left field fence here at Alex Box Stadium. It's where the U High Cubs, the University Lab School Cubs high school team, that's them right there. They're playing a game or something right now. But the, the uh, Savannah Bananas are actually practicing in the cages beyond the left field fence, kind of behind the third base dugout over there. The Savannah Bananas team is getting some cuts in in anticipation of uh, what will be three fantastic days of baseball here in Baton Rouge. Did you ever see the Harlem Globetrotters at the Rapids Parish Coliseum in its heyday back in the 60s, yeah, 70s? Did. Yes, I did. As great as that was, the Harlem Globetrotters for decades were one of the great shows in sports. The Bananas were even better. And I had a chance to see them, and I've seen the Harlem Globetrotters. The difference is the Harlem Globetrotters are always going to beat the Generals. Like, it's scripted in the sense that the Globetrotters are going to win. But in the Savannah Bananas play a team called the Party Animals, and they actually play a real game. They play banana ball, different set of rules, but they play a real game, and sometimes the, the Bananas win, sometimes the Party Animals win. That's the difference. Is, is, uh, it's, re, it's a real sport. It's a real game going on. Most of the time the Bananas win, but... About two-thirds of the time. Yeah. I like the rule that uh, if, if a fan catches a foul ball, the batter's out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think uh, David Marquez gave me this at 62% of the time the Savannah Bananas went. Ah, uh huh. You people are cold today. Here's Will Bush. Bronzini misses high. Three balls, two strikes after the strikeout to Hamilton. Bush is 0 for 1 on a bunt. The pitch off the plate a little bit and a one out walk. Walks have not been excessive for the most part for LSU this year. I've got that as the second walk. Little had one, now Bronzini's got one. As Here's Will Hel There's Will Helmers right there, number 48, former Jesuit High Blue Jay. Schwabe hitting 279. He's a capable leadoff batter. He's one for two today. He bunted his way aboard last time. The Tigers are looking to take a 16 and two record into Starkville this weekend. They've won 15 of 17 games so far. Schwabi is backed away. You know, Ronnie, if, 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 if our research and math is correct, LSU and Texas A&M are tied for the top record in the nation when it comes to combining the softball and baseball teams. LSU softball team is the only team in the country that has not suffered a loss. The softball team for LSU combined with the baseball team has lost two games and Texas A&M is undefeated in baseball, and their softball team has lost two games. So that collectively 
represents a tie with both LSU and Texas A&M suffering only two losses between them when you uh, combine the baseball and softball teams. The two losses for A&M were on the softball side. Wow. The two losses for LSU, of course, have been on the baseball side. Schwabe stays alive. Duke has done pretty well, 13 and 2 in baseball and 19 and 4, or rather 19 and 1 in softball. Alabama is 15 and 1 and 19 and 3. And Florida State hasn't lost a baseball game, but has lost five softball games. Now Florida State baseball last night beat Florida 12 to 8. The Gators surprisingly only 10 and 6 to start the season. I think that makes Florida State 15 and 0. That got in on the hands, and they're calling a foul ball. No, uh, let's see. Yeah, that is a swing. Swing That's a, and a strike strikeout. Yeah, yeah. See that he was often. swinging, and the ball may have hit him, but he swung and it hit him. Okay, watch. Does this? Meanwhile, we're going to have a pitching change. By the way, Florida State is 15 and 0. You are correct. All hyped up before the game. He'll bring out the uh, the old jam box, the boom box, the music playing that Drew Bianco started doing a couple years ago. Elmers has only allowed one hit. Braswell will play the safe way over to Pearson covering second base. One pitch. Stat about Florida State and their offense this year. 15 games. Every single game they've scored seven runs or more. That's pretty good. That's getting it done. Here's Brady Neal. Coming off a three hit performance. Yesterday he has walked and scored and struck out. This is the third. Different pitcher that Neal has faced. LSU has been held to three meager base hits. And this is a pitching staff talking about the Bison that came into this series with a staff ERA of just under nine. Let's see if Neal can be a table setter. Three and zero. Oh. Jones is on deck. There's a four pitch base on balls. That's the second walk of the day for Neil. Remember yesterday he went three for three. So he is knows his way to first base in this series. Well between Neil Jones and Travinsky that sounds like a run or more to me. Now you that lead off walk right college baseball is going to burn you. So we'll see if LSU can take advantage of it. Three infielders are on the left side of the diamond for the Bison. Jones has walked twice. There's a nice bender which breaks over for a strike. And you can see the defensive alignment. It's straight away in the outfield and pulled on the infield. I understand the the, the I ooh, that ball was called a strike. I thought it was. Up for sure. But you know I, I understand the shift the data tells you ground ball left side but got to be tough to turn a double play don't you think. It certainly With is no an second base for that middle <laughs> infielder is not yeah. I mean look second baseman's got to decide okay whether it's a ball worth trying to field or not and then he's got to get to the bag a little awkward. The one two pitch. To the big guy ripped into left center field. Nobody's going to get this one. It takes a hop off the fence. Neal is coming home. The throw is to second base. Jones is safe. The Tigers grab another run as Jones blasts one to the left center field warning track and then up against the wall. Neal scores 
from first base and Jones is a little bit shaken up it appears after that slide into second but he ripped this one Ronnie and Jones hit it almost too well and he had so much top spin on it it couldn't run it couldn't get out of the ballpark but he puts any backspin at all on that baseball it's over the scoreboard he just hammered it and then how'd you like to be the middle infielder colliding with the Jones on a head first slide no thank you well Ben the is going to replace him at second base so Jones went in a little bit awkwardly and appeared a bit gimpy as he walked off the field but Ben the is the runner after the RBI double by Jones. And now it's Hayden Dravinsky. He's first pitch swing. So LSU will have a new first baseman in the sixth, and we'll see who they put out there. What's your guess right now? Maybe Travinsky. Now he's the DH. Right, but he could go in. He could. Travinsky smashes one into right center field. That's going to be cut off just in front of the warning track. And Travinsky with a long single pushes Napolt to third base. I'm a little bit surprised yeah, he didn't was, score from second on that. Not the best read. I mean, Napolt's tagging because there's no outs and he wants to make sure. But I mean, he, you could kind of tell that, that. I mean, once the outfielders turn like that, he's got to take off. That's a. Uh, Travinsky's got to think, what do I got to do to get a score a runner from second? I hit a ball in the right center field gap, and we don't score. That was an RBI that uh, got taken off the board for old Travinsky. Well, now we've got an offensive conference again. So the base runners have been summoned, as well as the next two batters. I wonder if the Tigers are going to try to try some kind of deception on the base paths like they did yesterday. Here's Josh Pearson. 4-0 Tigers LSU after three scoreless innings finally adds to its 3-0 lead, which was accomplished in the first inning. Pearson is first pitch swinging. He hits it high and pretty deep, but playable by Hill. This will score the runner from third, Napolt as he crosses the plate standing up. And Pearson collects the RBI with a sacrifice fly to right. Well, Pearson will take the uh, the misread. He sure. gets an RBI out of it. But good, did his job. Wanted to try to get the bat head out early, pull that ball, lift the fly ball to the outfield, and he did. Now it's Braswell's turn. He's been hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. And he lined out to right field last time. The Tigers lead five to nothing. Five runs, five hits for LSU. No runs, two hits for North Dakota State. And a breaking pitch dives over for a strike. Hayden Sealty. One out. One on.
That's a bender which nips the outside edge. And Braswell is called out on strikes. Take a look right here. This is a good bender that just catches that outside corner. Got a good frame job, too. That's Big punch out. First strikeout for Sealty. And here's Kling, who walked with the bases loaded in the first inning and popped up to the shortstop last time. There's that bender again for a strike. Kling watches that one slide away. Two balls, two strikes on the LSU center fielder. Jake Brown is on deck. Kling waves. Some of the questions defensively we posed have been answered. It looks like Jake Brown has gone from right field to first base. Josh Pearson has gone from second base to right field. Ben Napolt, who was a pinch runner for Jared Jones, Appears to be at second base now. All right, so Jake Brown over there, the Polt at second. Brown, the lefty glove, which you want ideally for a first baseman. There's Pearson and right by LSU with a lot of flexibility, right, with their players. Many different positions. We saw Brady Neal, who's catching. He played right field yesterday. This will be a souvenir. So Napolt at second base, Brown on first, Pearson in right. Kling remains in center field, Bingham in left, White at third, Braswell is the shortstop. And Neal behind the plate. White from the backhand side has plenty of time, throws a strike over to Brown, and there's out number one. So Hake is 0 for 3. Now batting for the Bison, right fielder, Garrett Hill. Here's Garrett Hill, the right fielder. He has struck out and bounced out to third. The only two base hits have been a single by Schaffner with two outs in the first, or excuse me, the second inning, and a one out bunt base hit by Schwabe. In the third, that's been it in terms of the hit category for the Bison. Will Helmer's pumping strikes, working fast. Good 0-2 miss that time, 93 on the gun. He was trying to throw it out of the zone. Helmer sets up on the pitcher's plate about as far to his right as possible. Looks like the very heel of his back foot is in contact with the pitcher's plate. Not the rubber. You go pitcher's plate. Well, that's what it says in the rule book. Oh, okay. That's a hummer for a strike. Right at 94 miles an hour. And Garrett Hill is left at the plate. 
Yeah, Hill didn't like the call. Let's, but I mean, to me, it looked like a strike, huh? Yeah, I mean, that catches a lot of the plate. Had a little run back toward the batter, too, at the end. Yeah. Here's Clanton. Or excuse me, Canton. And on the one strike pitch, he lifts it out of play. Elmers tries to catch the inside edge and misses. Will Helmers has retired three in a row since coming out of the bullpen over the course of two innings. And he takes care of business. Does Helmers. He's face four. Beau Ravage Casino in Biloxi. The, it's where the Biloxi Shuckers Double A baseball team plays. They they host a lot of college baseball games at that ballpark. You know, obviously uh, their season starts in April after spring training, but until then, yeah, there's a lot of college baseball, especially midweek. Brown slices one foul. So the outfielder turned first baseman is behind in the count, two strikes. Joey Danielson is on the mound right now out of Eden Prairie Minnesota. Now that's Garrison Keeler country. 6 3 225 this big fellow was a catcher and they converted him into a pitcher. He's going to be 91 94 miles an hour on the fastball sort of has a little bit of a lower arm slot than normal and still kind of learning how to pitch. Well, people haven't been missing the ball much. He's allowed 14 hits in eight innings. Brown rolls one to the left side. The shortstop comes up firing and Brown is out on a very very close play and he is insisting that this one go to replay. Boy, this is and I, I think it, it, with the naked eye it looked like Brown beat it relatively easily but we'll take another look. I mean this gives you an idea of how Ruin fast the field he is. It's being challenged by LSU. This is their first challenge. I think you're right Lynn. Now did he do did he beat it enough but I, I think he was safe. So we go to the challenge booth. Jake Brown is convinced he beat the throw. Yeah, the shortstop Dunlap kind of waited back on that ball, probably not truly understanding the speed that was at the plate. He needed to move forward and move through the baseball. Now a little different angle here. Watch the foot when it touches the back. That right there, and the ball's not quite in the glove. So, so we'll uh, wait for the ruling. As we saw the replay, it looked like Brown did beat the ball to the glove. Boy, that he showed some tremendous speed. That, that's for sure, man. What can Brown do for you? After review, the ruling on the field is overturned. The runner is safe. No, what he can do for you is he can beat out an infield ground ball. That's nice as a hitter when you 
get a base hit when you're not supposed to. Yeah. But uh, he earned it with the hustle. So Brown is aboard. And here is Mac Bingham, the left fielder. He's one for three at the top of the order. Tommy White is on deck. Five runs, six hits for the Tigers. No runs, two hits for the Bison. Have you ever eaten bison? Have you had it? I have, but I, I feel weird talking about it while we're playing NDSU. You know, isn't that kind of disrespectful? I don't think they eat bison up there. Probably not, but it's it's very good. Very flavorful, flavorful, very lean. <laughs> no, it is good. I haven't had it in anything other than a bison burger. Oh, you haven't had a steak? No. Okay. The 2 1 pitch. Chop foul. Bingham is trying to push Brown along. He's at first base with nobody out after the infield hit. You're still a meat eater, aren't you? Absolutely. If anybody else told you otherwise, they're lying. This ball has hit a long way. You can turn around and watch that one sail into the bleachers, pucker up, and kiss that baby goodbye. Mac Bingham blasts one into the left field bleachers, scoring Jake Brown ahead of him. And the Tigers have now a 7 0 lead as Bingham smashes that home run, his second of the year, and his ninth and tenth run batted in. Well, that had to feel good for, for Bingham. It was a 365 foot blast, 93 miles an hour off the bat. And that's home run number 21 for LSU as a team this season through 17 plus games. Tommy White drills one up the middle. The shortstop makes a play. Oh, oh my. my goodness. That is major league quality right there out of James Dunlap. Wow. You have just seen a spectacular play from the shortstop who appears to be shaken up a little bit. But James Dunlap with one whale of a play. I think Tommy White probably when he hit this baseball didn't think he was going to have to Beat it out at first base. What an unbelievable grab. And that ball was actually by the shortstop when he left his feet to get it. It was behind him and he still managed to flag it down. Checking out that shoulder. Hopefully that young man's okay because that's a heck of a play. And he'll stay in the ball game at second base. So they had Tommy White they had the shift on. So you had the second baseman playing really the shortstop position. Shortstop was over there in the hole. So that's that was a heck of a grab. So let's make sure we get this right because it was the second baseman, Jake Schaffner, who made that play. He was shifted over. Yeah. But give credit to Schaffner. That is one tremendous play. And we apologize for the misidentification based on the positioning, but that was one terrific play by Jake Schaffner. My goodness. So how about this for excitement? A home run and then that gold glove play type action from uh, Schaffner, the second baseman. That's two games in a row that Tommy White has been robbed. Yes, he has. 
Here's Brady Neal, who has walked twice and struck out and scored twice. That's a foul ball. Neal doesn't think so. And now we're going to have a little bit of a question from Jay Johnson. Uh, so Jay Johnson wants to go down and have a conversation with Ryan Broussard at first base. Coach. Normally it's the home plate umpires call until the ball gets to the bag. See right here, we can. That ball's hit so hard, couldn't really quite tell. I, Neil definitely felt like it was fair. They may review this. Now they'll discuss it to see if anybody has a firm opinion on it. And if they come to the collective opinion that it should be reviewed, they'll do it. And it looks like the ruling is going forward without any review. Now Jay Johnson is saying, OK, I want an explanation. Well, he can challenge it, I think. Ronnie, I think there's a stipulation and I don't have the exact terminology in front of me, but I think there's a stipulation that a fair or foul ball cannot be challenged until it gets past the bases, either first or third. And in this case, I think that's what the umpires are trying to say, that it's not challengeable, it not, not able to be reviewed because the call was made prior to the ball getting past first or third base first base in this case Brady Neal steps in with a 356 average Four miles an hour by Danielson on the back to back pitches, the former catcher. And the pitch smashed on a hop. There's another good play by the second baseman. This time we are certain it is the aforementioned Jake Schaffner. Two outs this inning, Schaffner with both of them. Let's yes, see if Napolt can hit him a ground ball. This is the first at bat for Napolt. He came on as a pinch runner for Jones when Jones appeared to be slightly shaken up after a slide into second base. And Napolt stayed in the game on the infield. There's a knock to right, a solid single by Napolt. And he didn't waste any time turning it around. So now Travinsky. <laughs> A 
Ball one. Hayden has a fielder's choice RBI, a strikeout, and he singled last time. He's one for three. He takes a big swing but cannot connect. And the pitch chopped to the left side toward the hole. It's taken by Style. He comes up throwing low, but dug out by Hay has elapsed. April 5th against South Dakota is their first home game. And, you know, some years that can be an issue. Yesterday it was 60 degrees uh, on their campus. So, I mean, you know, they, this year it's the, it has not, they have not had as much snow, so it should be uh, perfect conditions for baseball when they finally do play a home game. Well, Alex Malazzo has gone in to catch for LSU. Malazzo will bat third, I believe. So Brady Neal is out. Alex Malazzo is behind the plate. And Malazzo will hit in the third position. Braswell leaves his feet. He makes the catch. One gone. Now, well, good things happen to pitchers when you throw strikes and work fast. And that's what Helmers is doing since he's entered the game. He's going one and two thirds. He's punched out two and has not walked anybody. Well, it would have been fitting if uh, Schaffner would have had a base hit after that spectacular defensive play, but Braswell said no thank you. Kyle Law is going to pinch hit right now. He's a sophomore and batting for style. Helmers has been throwing strikes. This is nubbed toward Napoleon. And he gets it done. A 4 3 put out. Well, how good has Helmers been? Six in a row retired over the course of three innings. Now he's done a nice job this season, the senior. Kind of finally coming to his own and has picked up his velocity over the last couple of years and throwing a lot of strikes. But uh, Jay Johnson using this as a teaching tool is going to get an opportunity to get. Cam Johnson, the young freshman in the game, even though he could have used Helmer, left Helmers in there, he wants to make sure that Cam Johnson gets some work tonight. Well, six faced and six retired for Helmers and a very nice relief roll. And we'll take a timeout here as the Tigers hold a 7 0 lead as we play in the seventh. Cam Johnson, the youngster. From Upper Marlboro, Maryland, a 6'5", 251 pounder, is on to uh, get a little work here with two outs, nobody on base. D.H. Davis Hamilton is scheduled to hit. Cam Johnson with three appearances this year, no record, a very high ERA, only two and a third innings of work, one walk and no strikeouts. Well, this is a young man who I saw him throw in the fall, and and I think it was against uh, the Raging Cajuns in a in a scrimmage uh, in a fall game. He punched he punched out like six or seven in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a fastball that night that day was 93 to 96, slider for strikes. But the first couple times it hasn't it hasn't gone super well. The command has been an issue, but. Once it all comes together for Cam Johnson, one of the most highly coveted, highly recruited pitchers in the country last year, he is going to take off. Hamilton has walked and struck out. This is his third at bat, and he's seen a new pitcher each time. 2 and 0. Oh. LSU got three in the first. 
mostly through gifts from the Bison and then were shut down in the second third and fourth innings before finding a pair in the fifth and a pair in the sixth. Johnson gets a lower strike zone strike. 96 miles an hour on that lefty offering. He pitched a third of an inning on March 9th against Xavier, faced one batter. Three pitches got him out, and that time right there lost him. But this has been the problem. There's Will Helmers. He did very nicely a couple of strikeouts in two innings of work over the course of three frames and he did not allow a base runner. I mean Ellis she could have easily just left Will Helmers oh, in sure. there to finish mm -hmm. the ball game and this is about the development of Cam Johnson trying to get him an opportunity to get some work. Bush swings and fouls it away. We're in the seventh. In a game that was to have started at one o'clock. It was moved back to four o'clock. Johnson checks the runner and misses outside. A one one pitch. Ground ball Braswell. He looks at second. Now he'll throw to first. And the inning is done. So Bush wrote innings of work. Needs to go to the craps tables. Really? Here's the pitch to Pearson. And we'll try to pick up all the other defensive changes as we can. There have been a bunch of them. Pearson is one for two. He's knocked in a run. Before this week, these teams had never played each other. That's out of play. Well, next year, North Dakota State is going to play the University of Alabama week three in a three game series. We uh, three game series in Tuscaloosa and then the following weekend week four, they will play Tulane. In New Orleans. Pearson goes down swinging. 93 mile an hour fastball ahead in the count one two expand the zone and was able to get Pearson to chase. Pitch by Reedinger. And Zeb Ruddle has grabbed a bat for LSU. So Ruddle is pinch hitting for Braswell. Braswell closes out the day 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. He lined to right. And then he struck out his last time. So it's Ruddle. Zeb Ruddle, a freshman outfielder from uh, Neville High School up in Monroe. He lines it right to the shortstop for the out. Dunlap was in the right place. Two gone, and Ashton Larson has grabbed a bat. He will hit for Kling. Larson is another youngster. Yep, on St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Overland Park, Kansas. He has not had a lot of at bats this year, but he looks like he knows what to do at the plate. Larson does have a couple of starts. He started on Friday and Sunday against Xavier this past weekend. 
Went one for five in his two starts. He lifts this one to left field. It is playable. And that will do it. A three up, three down inning for Reedinger. As Mack is the shortstop. As Kucherak, Arizona freshman. So Ruddle and left. Bingham moves from left field to center. Pearson remains in right. White still at third. Ryan Kucherak, the youngster at shortstop now. Ben Napolt, the second baseman. Jake Brown at first. Alex Malazzo catching. And Cam Johnson misses on the first three pitches. He's working to Schwabe at the top of the order. He's one for three. He had a bunt base hit in the third inning. That's going to hurt for a while. 95 mile an hour fastball fouled right off your ankle. Watch Schwabe right off the inside of his uh, right foot. On oh, actually on top the foot. Didn't get the ankle, got the meat. That's actually a better place to take a foul ball than on that. The, the ankle bone. There ain't no good place to take one. Mm -hmm. Put a little bison steak on it and <laughs> move on. You like bison, huh? I mean, the two times I've had it, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. You are a meat eater. Right? Oh, that's a good pitch. Cam Johnson comes all the way back. It's good for this young man. He fell behind three balls and no strikes and then worked it all the way back through three straight fastballs. And you could see a little fist pump right there. And Jay Johnson with a fist pump of his own. He was fired up for him because he wanted him to finish on so, a high note. So Cam Johnson. Both Cam Johnson on the left side and Aiden Moffitt from the right have touched 100. Bingham with a long run into left center field makes the catch as he approaches the warning track. 97 miles an hour on that first pitch. And he makes it look effortless, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Carson Hake is the scheduled hitter. Hake is 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs, and he sandwiched a strikeout in between those. By the way, Helmers is the pitcher of record in the long list of relievers. And we very well could see somebody else in the ninth. Hake is hitting 280. Aiden Moffitt slings it and a strike. 98 on that one. Point three. Oh, you want the point three, do you? I do. Okay. That one sounded louder, but it wasn't. One ball, two strikes. And something is loose back on the grandstand, a loose ball there. Here we go. One ball, two strikes, two outs. LSU looking for its third shutout of the season. Lead 7 0 in the eighth. The infield lurched a little bit. That one was 99. Might we see the 100 here today? Oh. 
That also was 99. It's lifted into the patch of sunshine and squeezed by Pearson. And that ends. And a very, very, very high ERA. Noah Gordon is catching. So Gordon behind the plate. I wonder if, uh, like, after batting practice when North Dakota State plays at home, if they, if they have, like, a big pan of pierogies, you know, the big Canadian dish. You ever had those? I have not. What is it? It's, like, it's kind of like, you know how like, we do French fries? Yeah. That, that's what pierogies is to them. Well, why don't they just say French fries? Well, it's not It's not a French fry. It's, it's a dumpling sort of thing. Can you tell me how to spell it? Well, there's poutines, there's pierogies, all that. The, the poutine? Well, poutine's like a French fry. It's French fries and cheese with a little brown gravy. That's a big, big dish in Canada. I can see why you might like that. Kind of fill you up on one of those minus 30 degree winter nights. I spent a summer in Brandon, Manitoba, Canada, which is actually north of uh, North Dakota. Drove through South North Dakota uh -huh. on the way to Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. It was a great place to be for June and July. Parked my car there in late April. I think it was one of the last weeks of April. Woke up the next morning and had two inches of snow. Oh, wow. On the car in the last week of April. Jake Brown draws a walk from Klepper. Ooh, ouch. That hits Mac Bingham. Break, it, was, it was a breaking ball that clipped him on the back, upper back. It's almost got him in the neck. That's where you don't, ooh, I don't look like it got him on the shoulder. Yeah, it looked like maybe the left shoulder blade. Fortunately, that was a uh, off-speed pitch. So runners at first and second. The walk off run is at the plate. There is a 10 run rule in effect. Uh, and we're gonna have a pitching change. Yes, we will. So they will go to the relief route one more time at least. And we'll be back to get you caught up and see if Tommy White maybe can end this game with the 10 run rule. Roman Trapani may be the last reliever for this Bison team today. He's a freshman out of Minnesota. A six foot, 190 pounder. His ERA is over 40. This is only his second appearance. He's worked two thirds of an inning and given up three runs. He's walked a couple. Trapini's out of Eau Claire, Minnesota. He has a, a brother, Vincent, currently plays at Illinois, Chicago after he transferred from Arkansas. So there was a SEC connection. And he is a six foot 190 right hander. Gets some cool experience here at the box. He's given up one home run. And so it's Trapini on to try to get Tommy White, who can mercifully end this game with a home run. Well, Tommy White only has two bombs on the year, and if you'd have told me before the season, 17 games in, he'd have two homers, I would have thought he, you, you, you're playing a joke on me. There's but a strike. He's yet to kind of get red hot, but yet his average is still 314. He's been a very productive on base percentage is high. Tonight he's had a double. And he was robbed of a base hit up the middle last time. Around. And robbed of an extra base hit by the center fielder yesterday. This will stay in the ballpark and settles into the glove of the left fielder, Canton. 
They've got a tight one going in Biloxi, Mississippi, New Orleans and Mississippi State, one each in the seventh inning. Well, if you're an LSU fan, you want them to play about 17 innings, 10 more innings. You want it to go as long as you can since the Tigers played Mississippi State on Friday in Starkville. Here's Malazzo batting for the first time. And the pitch from Trapini. Ball one. Malazzo is out of nearby Zachary. Yeah, Zachary High Broncos, a proud baseball program. You know, Cam Johnson, who was in the in the game last uh, last inning, went to IMG Academy, and I just saw the rankings came out the, the first batch of high school top 10 teams in America. IMG's ranked 10th in the country. The number two team in that light, latest poll, Catholic High, Baton Rouge, mm. number two team in America right now. Now, if you're voting. How in the world can you keep up with the thousands of high schools? Yeah, I don't think it's like a, I don't think they're asking a lot of people and I think it's a couple of specialists. An out at second and an out at first five four three double play takes care of business and we move on to it had a four nothing win over Xavier in the first game of that series. And now a chance to get its third shot out of the year against North Dakota State. Aiden Moffitt. Well, LSU's staff earn run average entering tonight's ball game for the entire year was 2.98. And the starting earn run average for, for all the starters of those 17 games was less than 1.5. One and a half runs. So that's big talk. I mean, like that is really good stuff. LSU just continuing to have staff dominance this season. Moffitt surrenders a base hit up the middle. That's Hills first. He's one for four. You don't have to but are, are you I'm a little concerned over the fact that LSU has not been able to torture this Bison pitching staff because this and I'm not being critical but the facts are this Bison pitching staff one of the worst in the country right now and LSU has not really been in sync offensively. Yeah it's you would have thought um, they entered tonight's game with an 8.88 earn run average it was over nine yesterday when they started so yeah you'd have thought LSU would have gotten healthy and, and had a, at least one of these two games be a big breakout offensive game get a few people turned around in the right direction and it just hasn't been the case so uh, while they're still trying to find their footing offensively one through nine. They're going to rely heavily going into the first few series on that dominant pitching staff that is arguably the best in the country. Bingham started in but he's got time to reverse and he's back and makes the catch a couple of steps in front of the warning track. Canton is retired. That's the first out of the inning. LSU today offensively is eight for twenty nine. That's 276 as a team. Here's Garcia. Luis Garcia batting for the first time. Ball one from Aiden Moffitt. The 30 game gauntlet starts this weekend as LSU goes to Mississippi State. One ball, one strike. Abe Moffitt looking good with a nice, easy motion ball just exploding out the hand. 95 to 99 miles an hour has been his range on the fastball. If he can just make sure he gets it over the white part of the plate, he's a guy that's going to move up in activity for this LSU bullpen. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one on. LSU seven. North Dakota State, nothing on three hits. LSU with eight.
We've got gymnastics for you on Friday night, the final regular season meet of the year. It'll be North Carolina and LSU at 7.30. That'll be here on the SEC ESPN Network. Swing and a miss. There's the second out. Moffitt continues to be impressive in relief. 96 with uh, run. Watch how the ball just kind of runs away from the left-handed batter. You want that late movement, and that was impressive. LSU softball team returns to action in Tiger Park at home this weekend. All three games will be available. And we'll have the middle game for you, the Saturday game. Actually, that's the first game in that series. It's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday series. The latter two games will be broadcast on the SEC network and uh, other platforms. And then we'll have the uh, first game for you on Saturday. Kyle Law at the plate, his first at bat. Here's the 2 1 pitch from Moffitt. Law is from Andover, Minnesota. This crowd sending out encouragement to get this game over. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in the ninth. Moffitt with a runner at first. And the pitch. It skips by Malazzo. And the wild pitch advances Hill to second base. And Moffitt trying to throw a breaking ball and just way over cranks it, pulls that one into the left hand and hit his batter's box. Tried to do too much with the pitch. Let's see if he makes the adjustment. The 3 2. High and away. And now two on but two out. Here's Davis Hamilton. Ball one tight. Oh, Malazzo uh, threw it back to the to uh, Moffitt and actually hit that batter in the helmet with the throw. They ought to award him first base. Watch right here. Throws it back to Moffitt and it hits him right on the side of the helmet. That ought to be a hit by pitch, don't you think? <laughs> Hamilton waits the 1 1 that backs him away. Malazzo gave him a little more room on that return. Yeah, he made sure. LSU trying to close it out with two outs, two on, and a 2 2 count now on Davis Hamilton with Aiden Moffitt trying to find one more strike. That's high. Now the runners will be moving. Hamilton has walked twice and struck out. This is the fourth pitcher he's faced. And we continue. And now the bases are loaded. And Jay Johnson watch timeout. Moffitt 
hurls the first one. It's a strike in the upper and outer part of the zone. He's from Rogers, Minnesota. A freshman is Noah Gordon. Hitting 258 in limited at bats. And Moffitt works ahead. Two quick strikes. Well, how'd you like to be down on the bench and hadn't played in this series? And hey, go get in there against Aiden Moffitt throwing 96 miles an hour at you. Moffitt unleashes it outside. The LSU a pitch away from its 16th victory of the season. And a call third strike and that'll do it. Moffitt leaves the bases loaded. The Tigers record their third shutout of the season. 7-0 the final. And Ronnie Ranch, your observation.